Hey, Sarah, can you please give me my book? Thank you. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I will bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and laying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests.
I am uh, so thankful for the birth of Jesus because in his life, he taught me how to live life. I was reflecting about uh, Jesus's walk on earth and how he moved, how he spoke and how, like what he did. And I really found myself out of alignment of the way that he was living life. I felt overwhelmed. And I felt like this image came to mind like Peter, like he, when he stepped out of the boat to meet with Jesus on the water, he was fine the, as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus. But the moment he like looked to the right and the left and noticed the waves, then he became overwhelmed and lost his focus. And I found myself kind of relating to that because in my life there were like simple scenarios that were going on, um, simple encounters here and there, and I found myself overthinking it. So once I found myself in this space, I was like, God, I feel so overwhelmed and I just felt like all of it was a grand waste of time and this is not how Jesus lived his life. And so as I was reflecting through the New Testament and I saw how Jesus walked and talked, yeah, he interacted with people, but he didn't get hung up. He always kept the main focus of doing the Father's will. And I think recently that's been my testimony is resetting my eyes, my heart, my focus and my attention to live my life for the audience of one. So I was really um, feeling things that sons and daughters of God should not feel. Anxiety, depression, feeling overwhelmed. I understand that as human beings, we're going to have moments of these. But when we find ourselves like in full on seasons of just anxiety and that becomes the norm, that's not to me, that's not normal and that's not healthy and that's not living my life like Christ. There's a scripture in Isaiah that says, come, let us discuss the situation together. And so I refer to that and I, I kind of go to my room or my quiet space and say, Lord, what do you think about this? This is what I think. I don't, I think this situation, you know, caught me off guard and I was unsure and I don't know if I responded well. I want to um, align myself with you. So what do you have to say about that situation? What do you have to say about the way I responded? And you know, what would you have me do? His focus on God. You know, he lived in and around and with people, but he uh, ultimately his eyes and his posture was set on God. And I think it's that example that, that I look up to him for. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round the young virgin mother and child, Jesus. 
Savior is born. Silent night, holy night, sun. Before my life with Jesus, um, life was very lonely and miserable, and I would have no motivation to get up, and I felt like life was meaningless, and I didn't want to talk to people because I feel like people would betray me because I would get hurt by people where they said they would be there for me, but they weren't. Felt like people were all just the same. I had a friend before. When we would hang out, she would always be on her phone. But then when I text her, she wouldn't reply. made me feel like I'd count her as my friend, but she didn't count me as her friend. I felt like I didn't want to express how I felt anymore. And if I don't express it, then I wouldn't get hurt again. One day, a church member who was also a student at Saddleback asked me to join uh, the media team at the church. And I said, yes. After that, I just came to the church to do camera and I would leave right after. At that time, I didn't know anything about the church. As time progressed here at church, I began to feel more love and my heart was more open to feel the love. If I made a mistake, they would tell me that it would be okay. One of the church members would 
give me hugs. And at first, I felt very awkward. But then later on, the more I received the hugs, the more I got used to it. It was heartwarming and it made life more meaningful. I feel like there are other people that may have that like heart blockage where they can't receive it. And I feel like it's a heartwarming thing where I feel like everybody should be able to feel it. He can heal broken people. He can teach people how being nice to people can make their life more meaningful and joyful.
living for us No Growing up in my childhood, I gotta say, um, it was pretty normal life with a loving mother and father. Uh, through the years, as I started to get in my teenage years, uh, my parents started having uh, some disagreements and later divorced. And, you know, it affected me in a way of confusion as my dad left when I could have used a father figure at that time. So I really wasn't led in a good direction when I could really use that. Um, you know, and through the years, uh, as I grew up, God blessed me with three beautiful children, and one of them being this young man right here. Um, I met a lady and we conceived him before we got married. So it wasn't really a relationship built on God that I know now, and if I would have known things back then, it could have been different. But through those years, we had divorced as well. And um, yeah, I wasn't around my children when they were young for quite a few years. You know, I had moved to a different place and there was some very life changing events, you know, in my life, but I can only imagine how this affected you. Yeah, you know, it was difficult, you know, in my, my younger years, my high school years and my young male adult years, it was, it was hard not having you around, you know, going through certain situations and you know, decisions, you know, it was it was difficult not having the guidance and the support of my father there. You know, um, one thing I did learn out of it, though, is that, you know, I had God. God was my heavenly father. And, you know, he also showed me the importance of, you know, me being a great husband and me, me also being there for my kids, you know, the importance of it, you know, especially at a young age. But um, yeah, you know, about a year ago, I got some really difficult news and I found out that you know, my, co my company was closing its doors and I would be out of a job by the end of this year. And, you know, that brought a lot of just bad emotions and feelings, you know, a lot of insecurity, a lot of doubt, uh, just a lot of uncertainty and just feeling lost. And, I, you know, I remember one church service, you know, on a Sunday, you showed up and in transition, you know, you saw me, you saw the struggles I was going through. And before this, you know, at the beginning, I was really reaching out to a lot of people and trying to find comfort and almost searching for a father figure. And during that day, that Sunday, you know, you saw the struggle on my face that I was going through. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you told me, you said, son, you gave me a hug. You said, son, you know, if you ever need anything, I'm there for you, you know, day, night, anytime, you know, give me a call. And I went home that day and was still having, you know, a difficult time. So I went in my room and took some time to pray. You know, and I told God that, you know, I thank him for being my heavenly father, I said, but I really feel like I need my earthly father. And so I prayed that, you know, my dad would call me and God answered that prayer like almost instantly. And within an hour, my dad called me. And when I picked up the phone, you know, he told me, he said, son, you know, I really felt it on my heart that I need to give you a call and see how you're doing. And just just reiterate, like, I'm here for you. And, you know, you're not going through this season alone. And I was just so thankful at that moment, you know, for God answering that prayer. And, you know, from that day, I feel like our relationship began mending. And, you know, we've been speaking every day since. You know, I just got to thank God for his son, Jesus, being born and the suffering he went through for us, you know, to bring us back together. And there is always hope and there's always faith. You know, it brings tears to my eyes of joy and compassion to know that you forgave me. And um, it's just incredible uh, what Jesus and God has done for us. Um, I feel through life's events that I've been through, now I can be here as a father. It was God and the faith and, and church that has brought me here to this church. Um, 
and the pastors are so wonderful and the teachings that my heart has changed and I can feel growing and I can feel growing in our relationship with you. Yeah, and I'm, you know, me too. I'm, I'm so thankful of the leadership here. I'm so thankful of my pastors, you know, my friends, you know, my family, you know, people who kind of know the, the story and the struggle of the season that I'm in, you know, and my wife, she's been there from day one. But one thing I, you know, I really want to be thankful for Jesus and the day he was born, you know, because from that day, he walked out everything that we all go through and the struggles we go through. So he understands and he's compassionate. And when he died on that cross, he forgave me. And he gave me the compassion and the ability to forgive my dad and to bring us together and allow us to both heal. So, you know, I thank God and I thank Jesus and I love you so much, dad. I love you too. And I just wanna reach out to all the families and just say that God is always with you and always loves you and will always bless you if you just let him into your heart.
Come on, let's give it up for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, Stevie, take it away. Let's keep singing. Come on, we're going to sing it again. Joy, I speak of joy. And all the flowing well, no tongue can tell. Joy, I speak of joy. thank you for the joy that we have in you, that you are our joy. It's the joy of the Lord that is our strength, that you are the Prince of Peace, that you've come and given us peace that passes understanding, that Jesus, you came and you became Emmanuel, God with us, so that we would experience and you would reveal to us the love of our Father. We thank you for your love that Jesus, as you've been given, you said freely you would give us all things. We just pray for the joy and the peace of Christmas to be here that this would be a year where you would restore relationships, restore families, that those that are away from you, that they would experience the joy and the life of Christmas. So we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. We celebrate your goodness. We sing of your love forever. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Welcome once again to all those that are tuning in online. We love you.